Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for having us today. Uh, my name is Katie DeCourt. I am a youth services librarian with the Sacramento Public Library. And I'm Eric Berman. I'm the teen services coordinator for the Alameda County Library. Um, <laughs> Um, and our presentation today is Census and Sensibility, Preparing California Libraries for the 2020 Census. Just do it back. Hooray. Um, so Eric and I, along with our four other team members, uh, were assembled as part of the Developing Leaders in California Libraries Leadership Challenge uh, from December 2018 through May of 2019. So our group decided to tackle the question, how can libraries position themselves as a key community player in regards to the 2020 census? And after our six months of working together, we developed a toolkit um, that we hope can be used by libraries throughout the state and hopefully the country. So a little bit of background, what exactly is the census? So the census is conducted every 10 years in an attempt to accurately count every living person in the United States. An accurate census count is crucial as it is used to apportion the seats in the US House of Representatives, thus, thus determining the number of votes that each state receives as part of the Electoral College. And it also establishes how federal funds will be distributed to communities throughout the country. The 2020 census brings about additional challenges as this will be the first year that it is conducted primarily online, potentially creating barriers of access for groups within the community. So public libraries are a trusted hub of information and access and they will play a vital role in helping their community members be counted. Um, so census data helps determine how uh, billions of dollars in federal funds are allocated to communities around the country. In 2015, California received about $77 billion in census-related funds, and that comprised of 80% of the total federal funding that the state received that year. Um, and then as you can see in the chart over that 40-year period, um, the federal funds, while it more than doubled, the total state spending has tripled in that same amount of time. Uh, census data also determines how representatives are apportioned every 10 years in the U.S. House of Representatives. According to the LA Times, in the 2000 census, a mere 18 people counted resulted in California picking up an extra congressional seat. So if you're asking yourself, why should anyone participate? Um, it's important for an accurate census count as it will impact services available to the community. Data collected from the census helps stimulate economic growth. It supports new legislation and policies, and it also affects funding to the IMLS, which directly impacts the grants that states can apply for under the Library Services and Technology Act. Um, that fourth point is probably the most important one on the screen. The 99% of hard to count census tracts are within five miles of a library. So chances are you will see a very big jump in foot traffic during census season next year. Um, and then lastly, it's also required by law and it has very long lasting impacts on your quality of life. So as I mentioned earlier, the 2020 census will be the first time uh, where the count is conducted primarily online. Um, this will impact those hard to count and hard to reach communities, which could significantly um, affect your accurate count. Community members are most likely to turn to the trusted hub of information and resources, which would be your library. Um, the census is also providing 1-800 numbers for people to respond over the phone. Their uh, addresses will be verified using the satellite imagery. There are census workers in the field um, that will take count. And then also the questionnaire this year will have write-in areas. So what are libraries already doing? Uh, libraries around the state are establishing community partnerships. They are planning programs and anticipating their community needs in preparation for the 2020 census. And we have some examples on the screen behind us. Uh, information and resources can be shared both in and outside of library walls, which can increase access for all of your community members. So we are here today to offer you a tool um, in the form of a toolkit that can help support you in whatever stage of planning that you are in. So our toolkit 
is designed for libraries of any size and budget to utilize to support your 2020 census efforts. So our main goals with the toolkit were to provide access to census related information for your staff and patrons, to promote participation with the census and to promote engagement with your community members. And now I will hand it off to Eric who will go a little bit more into detail about the sections of our toolkit. Thanks. So I think one of the important things to talk about when we're thinking about our toolkit is that there's a lot of great information online. The ALA has provided some about what the census is and even some about the value. But what we wanted to do is provide something that was really practical, something that you could take parts of and just use immediately or use as the basis for your own programming. So with that in mind, we developed our toolkit and it's divided into several different parts, um, each dedicated to a different part of the planning and creation uh, of your census programming. So the first thing we wanted to do is talk about preparing your community. And the idea of that is we wanted to give you talking points. We want to give you talking points to um, communicate with your community stakeholders, people who might not necessarily be interested in participating in the census or working with you to participate in the census, whether that's local organizations, maybe your uh, your city government who's like I don't really understand the position or you know we have some grave concerns about the use of that census we also provided resources that you can use to check the census participation both in your community but also in your large area things that you're doing but things that outside partners might be doing in your area and we just provided reasons why the library should be involved with the census participation in your community the second part was to get your staff involved because if your staff aren't active participation, participants in the census programming, it's really not gonna take off. So we wanted to make sure that your staff understood why we're doing the census work and what was so important. But we also wanted to give them the tools to make them feel like they understood what the census is and they could communicate with your library members in a positive way. And we also wanted to tie them to training opportunities offered not just in your local community but also by uh, local, state, and federal agencies. Our next step was marketing, because we know that's a really difficult thing for a lot of libraries. We wanted to provide resources so you could promote the census to as large a group as possible. We wanted to help you provide, identify who the library should target, what areas that you may might think about, who isn't in the room in this census conversation, and reach out directly to them. And we also provided a list of different uh, marketing opportunities that you can do in various different price points from things that really require no resources and just staff time to things that are slightly more expensive such as buying ads and putting them in bus stops. And then finally we wanted to provide a list of census programs. We know that sometimes you don't have a lot of uh, time to develop those programs or you want a place to start to develop your own one. Um, we wanted to give you programs that told your community about the census, helped engage your community in the census process, really to share information, increase awareness, and prepare. We have things for adults, we have things for children, and we have things for teens. And you'll find in the census examples and dedicated lesson plans for some of the events. And then finally, I wanted to provide a frequently asked questions section. This is really designed for your staff to answer their own questions, but also to take and answer community questions. So things about, how do I know if I'm being scammed by the census? Is it safe to take? Can I not answer a question on the census? All of these have uh, annotated answers with resources and links to uh, census-related information that you know that the information you're providing your uh, members is valid. And then finally, we have a pretty extensive list of appendices, uh, things that you can pull out and provide and use directly in your service. So we have a checklist to make sure you're ready for the census. We have a list of recommended readings that we used and also that we um, we used. We also used uh, things that your members could be find useful. We have reading lists of books that were related, and believe me, it's very difficult to find children's books related to the census, but we found one. <laughs> we also developed flyers and logos related to the census that you can use and download and add to your own programs, a game board to get people excited about the census, and learning plans for um, some of our programs. Finally, you probably are wondering where to get this. I would have printed out copies for all of you, but it's about 57 pages, and I like Mother Earth a little bit too much. 
Uh, you can find information on the tool toolkit in a number of places. That's our bit.ly link to it, which will link directly to our current version of the toolkit. The Pacific Library Partnership has a, um, a census-related web page resource with a link to this as well. And the State Library has a census-related search area where you can find this. Uh, that's the end of our presentation. I know it's a little quick, but we wanted to open up a lot of time for questions. Um, I have a question about the satellite imagery verifying people's addresses. Um, about how that works, especially for folks who don't have permanent addresses, or? So uh, the census works a little bit different for unhoused uh, individuals. They're not tracked um, in the same way that somebody who has a residence is. There's no way to mail them information. So instead, those residents who don't have a permanent address, um, including people who might live in a mobile home or a houseboat, are communicated to by a different group of census workers. They'll go out to the community and talk to them on a one-on-one, -on -one, go out to the places where they reside. Hi there, thank you. It's a great uh, presentation. Um, I was just gonna make a quick point that my, my wife works in a local nonprofit and she's part of this uh, group of you know different uh, nonprofits uh, working around the census. And I was just surprised to hear from her that like people just don't know about the census actually. And so like the amount of outreach um, that people will hopefully be able to do with this should be is really great. I was surprised by that. Yeah, thank you. It is really important. I mean we talked just a little bit in Alameda County, uh, every person who's counted counts for about a thousand dollars of federal funds. So over ten years that's ten thousand dollars. And people don't understand that especially because it only comes up once every 10 years. So um, this is the first time I've heard about the 800 number. So will it be available in languages other than English? So there will be language resources. Uh, l let me pull back and say that the census is really encouraging everybody to do everything online. So all the resource, all the information that you're gonna find to say, we well, should fill out this online application. Um, I believe there's 18 languages that they have sort of um, fairly well translated versions of these things that I believe if you call on the number, they'll connect you to a translator, but I'm not 100% sure on that. If you talk to me afterwards, I can communicate and try to find that information for you. Um, but there's about 54 languages, is that right? Sounds about right. Um, that they are translating census related material to most of those extra ones um, instead of being a full translation it's sort of a defined definition card that they can use to reference the information to any other questions hi um i'm on my uh, or I was on my county's um, complete count committee with other um, board of supervisors and members from different departments um, in our county system. And it's interesting to me, as has happened in the past with other government-run social services, how much extra is being asked of the libraries to help support this effort that has previously been funded and has hired additional people to help. My question is whether you have had direct um, contact with the U.S. Census Bureau to find out what they're planning on doing in dispatching their own employees to assist in the libraries with people that need help taking the census on the computer so that it doesn't sap um, our staff time. Do you have anything? I, I don't know if you can <laughs> provide any insight on that. It, it, I, I've had my own experience with my connection with those, um, the US Census Bureau and there hasn't seemed to have been much offered. Yeah, so my understanding is that the Census Bureau is not going to be like sending staff regularly to the locations, mm -hmm. but they are working with library staff 
to make sure that they have some training to assist or answer questions about that. Um, this is more, this is now instead of my personal opinion rather than the, the official uh, word of census, but it really has seemed to me like the census is kind of continuing like normal and really the ramp up has been that we as the library community um, and perhaps I think we as local government institutions in California are really feeling like this is a very important census and that's who's ramping up the pressure. Yes. Do you know if the Census Bureau is anticipating a lot of potential non-participation because um, Trump had attempted to get a citizenship question on there and are, is there going to be some drive to make sure that people know that this is not an attempt, which I'm assuming it's not, to track non-citizens? Great question and um, if this toolkit had been released at the same time last year, uh, there would be some very different questions about the citizenship question on there. Um, a couple things to unpack in there. Uh, first, the Census Bureau did not want to answer that question. They have better tools to gather the information, including the census, the American Community Survey. Um, so this really wasn't a census-derived question. They did studies about this and had some serious worries about the undercount. However, they did do a sort of sampler census uh, in the last few months to see if it would have an impact. I don't remember, I don't know if they've released the specific details about whether it did or it didn't have an impact on there, but uh, the Census Bureau is definitely worried about an undercount just from moving from a paper survey to an online survey. Over. Hi, I'm uh, Amy Martin from the Oakland Public Library, and I wanted to highlight um, a project some of my colleagues are working on. I think there's a couple of people in this room. Um, our Gender Diversity Task Force is working on a toolkit for people who are not male or female, because we learned that the census question uh, one of the required questions on the census is sex, and the answer, the options are only the binary sex. Um, and so that leaves out anybody who is not male or female. Um, and we have found very few resources. There's nothing in ALA's toolkit about it. There's nothing in um, Equality California didn't have anything about it. Um, so I just wanted to let people know that um, Oakland Library has a task force that's working on this question. Um, as you probably found from your research, it's not legal to skip a question and not answer. Um, it's not likely to be prosecuted, but um, you can't just not answer that question. And there is no legal answer for people, for example, who have an X on their driver's license in California. Um, you can't answer it legally. So we have staff who are working on that now, and I'm happy to share what they come up with. Yeah, I would love it if you did connect with us about that. And we can see, at the very least, connect to the work you've done in our toolkit, maybe include some of the things in our toolkit and perhaps in ALA's toolkit as well. Um, yeah, I will say the process is that if you don't answer a question, they will follow up with you and you know, kind of nag you about filling out a question. Um, and yes, it is technically illegal not to answer one of those questions or to answer it incorrectly, but I believe the last time somebody was prosecuted is in 1980. Sorry, I'll ask a question. <laughs> um, in the toolkit or, you know, in talking about this, um, do you, does there need to be a verbiage that we provide patrons to assure them that this is not information the library itself is collecting and taking, you know, because we are a trusted place that people go to, making sure that if they are filling out the census that they feel safe, that we're not actually getting the info and also that, um, they can feel safe, you know, kind of going back to the previous questions, that they can feel safe submitting that information. I think the safety of our patrons, our members, and um, their security and their privacy is one of the important parts of the toolkit. And a lot of our talking points 
speak to that. I don't think we have a toolkit question that specifically addresses that this is the information the census is going to collect and not the library, but in all our descriptions were very clear that it is the U.S. government census that wants this information, not the library. I, I'm sorry, I can't recall whether you covered this in your presentation, but um, do you, is there anything in the toolkit about addressing cybersecurity concerns? They were talking about like security of information, but also like getting scammed, like people getting texts that say it's from the US Census and kind of how to weed that out, because I know a lot of our elderly patrons in particular are really paranoid and rightfully so. Um, yeah, and this is actually one of the areas where the Census Bureau itself does a pretty good job. So we link directly to their resources and in both our frequently asked questions and preparing our staff area, when we talk about educating our, our members, we talk about how to recognize whether this is authentic census information. It actually came in really useful for me the other week because one of my um, paraprofessionals came in with a thing from the census, like, is this real? It looks like a scam to me. So we used it and it turns out it was. <laughs> No, it was real. <laughs> it was like American Crime Survey or something. And I asked if they'd ever been a victim of a crime. And that seemed real weird to me, but uh, no, they asked it. I'm right behind you. And I think this will be the last one. Hi, um, I am, I'm from San Diego County. I work really closely with Liz Vagani, so we're super aware of the census, and I, I just wondered whether or not um, your library systems are participating in outreach in those communities that are expected to be undercounted. Um, I know in San Diego, we are working at 13 of our library branches with actually having on-site community-based organizations at our branches in order to deliver that information um, in the best way possible. Uh, yeah, so just very quickly in our toolkit, that's one of the areas that we talk about is communicating and working with community organizations to deliver information about the census. You know, mm -hmm. the people who are trusted by your undercounted communities are the people you should be reaching out to. Um, in Alameda County, where I work, it's a lot of unincorporated areas and a lot of um, small cities. So each branch is taking control of who they communicate with and reach out to. Um, but that's something that we've been really encouraging and empath empathizing in our group. Do you want to speak to yours? Sure, yeah. Um, and in Sacramento, um, I work at one of the 28 libraries that are within the system, and so our community engagement manager has really taken on that role of being the census person um, within our group. Um, she's working towards getting census action kiosks placed in all of our libraries, and then we're going to be hosting a uh, Let's Talk About forum discussion all about civility in February of next year leading up to the census. Well, thank you so much for uh, listening to us.